NASA's newest planet hunter has returned an amazing image containing thousands of stars that contain a sample of the extrasolar planets it will soon discover. Welcome back to Launchpad. I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. The Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, was launched in April 2018 and spent the last four months getting itself into the right orbit and generally commissioning its instruments and getting ready for science observations. On August 7th, TESS completed its first set of science observations and NASA released the resulting images, and they're spectacular. The image was taken with TESS's four onboard cameras, each of which contained four detectors mounted in a 2x2 two two array. The result is a wide field image that is 24 degrees across and spans up to 96 degrees from the ecliptic to the poles. That's an enormous strip of the sky. The first image is dominated by the large and small Magellanic clouds. These are small dwarf irregular galaxies that are satellites to our Milky Way. They're home to hundreds of millions of stars and lie about 160,000 light years from Earth. Just north of the small Magellanic cloud is a globular cluster called NGC 104, also known as 47 Tucanae. This is a swarm of several million stars that are a mere 10,000 light years from Earth. There are several other globular clusters in the images, as well as some distant background galaxies. But the real stars of this image are the, well, the stars of this image. Some of the stars, like Beta Gruis and R. Doradus, are so bright that they saturate the detectors, causing electrons to spill over into the adjacent pixels. TESS does its work by making several images of the same sector of the sky at any given time. First, it completes a sequence of two-second exposures that are combined to form a single 20-second exposure. The light from about 1,000 pre-selected stars are measured and recorded. These stars are being monitored for sudden variations in their brightness over time. These brightness variations are usually caused by fluctuations on the surfaces of the stars. This allows astronomers to probe the interiors of these stars and understand their internal structures. This is called astroseismology, and it's a great way to learn about a star from afar. See what I did there? I said star... Okay, fine. 60 exposures are combined to form a single two-minute exposure, which then gets automatically scanned for the periodic brightness fluctuations in several thousand stars at once. These are the telltale signals of a planet transiting across its host star, subtracting just a tiny fraction of the star's light. After 1,800 exposures, they're combined to form a single 30-minute exposure, which is stored on board the spacecraft along with the rest of the star monitoring data. Then the process repeats again for about two more weeks until the spacecraft returns to its closest approach to Earth and downloads its data when the data rate is the highest. Then it swings back out high above the Van Allen radiation belts and begins another two weeks of science. TESS spends about 27 days monitoring each sector of the sky. Then it pivots by 24 degrees to begin a new sector. As a matter of fact, as of this filming, TESS is already working on sector two. After a year, TESS will complete its survey of the southern sky. Then it'll flip 180 degrees and begin its survey of the northern sky. After its two-year mission, TESS will have served about 85% of the sky, examining over 200,000 stars for nearby exoplanets. It's expected that TESS should be able to detect anywhere from 4,500 to as many as 20,000 new exoplanets. But even if TESS ends up at the low end of this range, it will have more than doubled the number of exoplanets that have been discovered since 1992. And by the way, that's just for the nearby bright stars. The reason astronomers want to study exoplanets that are closer to Earth is because the closer the stars are, the brighter they appear, making their planets much easier to study. TESS's predecessor mission, the Kepler Space Telescope, revealed that most stars, in fact, have planets around them, and that most of these planets range in the size between Earth and Neptune. These are the so-called super-Earths, and we don't seem to have anything quite like that here in our own solar system. But because most of Kepler's targets were distant and therefore very faint, there was little else that we could really learn about these planets other than their sizes and distances from their host stars. But TESS will build a catalog of nearby 
exoplanets that can be studied in greater detail with the James Webb Space Telescope and ground-based telescopes like Keck and the upcoming super telescopes such as Giant Magellan, 30 meter, and the Extremely Large Telescope. These follow-up studies will let us learn much, much more about these planets, such as their masses, their densities, and maybe even their atmospheric compositions. TESS is designed for a two-year primary mission, but it has an orbital trick up its sleeve that would allow it to remain in the exoplanet business for a lot longer. Its elliptical orbit is highly inclined to Earth's. This allows TESS to spend most of its time high above the Van Allen radiation belts, allowing it to take images that are free of noise and interference. But Earth's tidal forces will intervene and gradually destabilize TESS's orbit. But TESS's mission designers were clever enough to ensure that TESS completes two orbits for every single orbit of the Moon. This allows the Moon to counteract Earth's tidal forces, ensuring that the spacecraft should remain in a stable orbit for at least a decade. Imagine what we could learn if TESS was given a 10-year mission to seek out strange new worlds. So what are you looking forward to learning from the TESS mission? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check it out. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this amazing universe of ours, well, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, keep watching the skies. ...of a planet transiting across its host star. It's also an airplane transiting across my yard. Uh.